Hello, this is uh, Akis from uh, Learn Codings, and um, today's presentation look, is looking at bubbles and pinholes in epoxy floors. What causes them and how can we prevent them? Now look at these nice floors here, and uh, these are epoxies in the polyurethane floors. They produce lovely results, but sometimes when we go near the surface, we see these bubbles and pinholes. and uh, the, the subject of today's uh, presentation is to understand why uh, these uh, pinholes emerge. Uh, first thing I want to say is that these pinholes do not actually emerge after the application. They, 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 they occur during the application phase. So when the screed is still wet, uh, gas is generated that produces these little bubbles. I just want to clarify that because sometimes we see the bubbles afterwards, we notice them after the application and we think they appeared afterwards, but they actually appeared during the application. So let's go and have a look at the main reasons why this happens. Now the first reason, which in my opinion is probably the most common reason, is that the substrate is of poor quality. Um, when you coat epoxy floors, especially screeds that are bigger in thickness, they can be a few uh, millimeters in thickness, perhaps a uh, one eighth or one sixteenth of an inch. Um, when you coat these floors, you want to make sure that the substrate does not have any pores, because when you have pores and when the substrate has holes and it basically it absorbs the screed, the screed kind of sinks into the floor and then little bubbles come out. So you want to make sure that when you are working with epoxies, you don't try applying them on rough concrete or uh, sandy cement surfaces or these foamy cements, the, the light ones where you can just scratch it and powder comes out you want to make sure there are no holes in the actual substrate because that will produce bubbles and also another factor is moisture or dampness moisture and dampness can, may also produce uh, bubbles in the epoxy screed and here, let this picture have a look at this picture here this is an example of a nicely primed and sealed floor. This floor is ready now to be coated with epoxy screed. Um, it's very important that if you're going to do a, a, a self-leveling floor, a 2 or 3 millimeter floor, you want to make sure that the floor has been properly sealed and primed in advance. Otherwise, you will run the risk of having many bubbles. So, a reminder, before you do the, la the final top coat, make sure that all the cracks and holes have been uh, filled with epoxy grout. Now the second reason why we might get bubbles in uh, epoxy floors is during the actual application. It's not, whereas the first reason was looking at the substrate, now let's look at the application. Um, very important, I mean epoxy floors are not easy to apply. You want to work with trained personnel that know what they're doing and uh, you should be using spiked rollers in order to eliminate the gas because when you spread the floor screed on the floor you will get little bubbles and you you know with a spiked roller you can eliminate these bubbles have a look at this uh, worker here he's actually wearing spiked shoes he's on he's walking on wet epoxy screed and he's using the roller to eliminate any little bubbles and pinholes he might see so as a reminder one use spiked shoes so you can actually access all areas of the floor and the reason why I'm saying this is because if you don't act if you don't wear spiked shoes you may not actually be able to see bubbles emerging so you may coat one area then you move to the next area a bubble pops up somewhere but you're not actually there to see it so by having spiked shoes you can actually go back to the wet areas of the floor and make sure everything is alright something else which is very important um, you want to have a well lit area when you are working because uh, bad lighting can always hide many problems so make sure you have good lighting and uh, you want to pay special attention to the corners and the edges I find that's where most problems with bubbles occur uh, but probably because the spiked roller sometimes doesn't go all the way to the wall it doesn't it doesn't access those corners and people don't tend to pay attention that much to the corners also you get many shadows in the corners so you definitely want to inspect the corners and the edges around the, around the floor. And finally, there is a third reason why you might get bubbles in epoxy floors, and that has to do with the product. Be careful when you mix the various components. We're talking about epoxies here. They are two-pack or three-pack 
uh, systems where you have the uh, A component, which is usually the resin, you have the B component, which is usually the hardener, and you may sometimes want to use a filler as your third component. You obviously need to use an electrical mixer to mix these, but one mistake some people make is they actually use a very high-powered mixer that has a very fast speed, and that can actually generate more bubbles if it's too fast. Um, so you don't want to be using a mixer that's been designed for mixing cement or plasters. You want to mix, use a mixer that has an adjustable speed so you can slowly mix the product. You don't want to mix a product for a long time, at least two minutes, but it should be adjustable and slow. Another issue that we see with the bubbles in the product is when you use products with high amounts of solvent. Uh, solvent evaporates. This means that when solvent is evaporating, you are going to get bubbles in the screen. If you use products with lots of solvent, you will have lots of bubbles. So that's why we always, we always advise when you work with um, self-leveling floors, you want to have a 100% solid product, no solvents in there. If you are going to add some solvent to help you with the flow, make sure it's, very, it's a very small amount, no more than 2 or 3%. And uh, another reason sometimes we see with, with products is we see a lot of cheap products emerging right now and uh, their quality is usually very poor. They have various additives that in order to make the product cheap and this can actually cause problems. It may be a reason why you're getting more bubbles in your product. So you also want to make sure that you know, you're working with good quality products. Your chances of having problems with bubbles are going to be less. Now let's conclude and uh, remind ourselves of the three main reasons I um, discussed today. The first reason why you're going to get pinholes and bubbles is issues with the substrate, the, uh, the problem with the rough concrete, rough cement, uh, concrete that has not been sealed properly. The second reason is poor application, reminder to use spike rollers, spike shoes to make sure you don't get them. And the third issue is issues related to the product. Make sure you're not using a high-powered mixer. Make sure that you're not adding too much solvent in your product. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about epoxy floors, I um, recommend that you click on the link below and you can uh, visit our website. You can sign up to our mailing list so you get information whenever we bring out new articles. And more importantly, you also get a free four-page troubleshooting guide uh, that lists various trouble problems that occur during epoxy floors and you can actually see maybe you may get some advice there.